far in 2001, nature's thrown everything possible at the World Rally Championship. Ice in Monaco. Snow and temperatures of minus 20 degrees in Sweden. Torrential rain and mud in Portugal. And hot sunshine, last time out in Spain. For round five, the championship heads south to Latin America for one of the toughest rallies of the year, Rally Argentina. Rally Argentina is currently the only round of the World Rally Championship held in the Americas. The route takes in some of the most dramatic terrain of the year, from vast open plains to the rocky moonscape of the Andes foothills. This is a country steeped in motorsport history. On these very roads raced greats like Juan Manuel Fangio. Overall, Argentina is the highest rally of the championship, tough on man and machine. The thin air at high altitude saps engine power, and in the huge water splashes, there's a risk of drowning the engine completely. Also against the drivers is unpredictable weather, and stages run on rough, changeable surfaces. But these extremes are all part and parcel of rallying, and a driver must master them in three days, in the fastest possible time. So this is how things look after four of the 14 round World Rally Championship. Don't forget it's 10 points for a win, six for a second, all the way down to one for six place. For the rally, almost 390 kilometers of stages to the north, west and south of Cordoba, one of the host towns for the 1978 Soccer World Cup. Four-time champion Tommy Mackinnon has won twice already in 2001, and here he looks a good bet. I like this event. I, I know the, the states as well, and uh, states is how to do them, and uh, and uh, I, I have a good feeling for the car at the moment. We did good testing in Cyprus, and uh, a few days here, and uh, it's been still improving a little bit. Another former winner here is Peugeot's Didier Oriol, fresh from his first victory for two years in Spain. His confidence is at an all-time high. Oriol's teammate Marcus Grunholt won the World Championship last season, but this year has been disappointing. He's only finished one rally, and he needs victory here to keep in the title race. Last year, he managed second in Argentina, despite moments like these. Sports Carlos Sainz ended last year's event early after he T-boned a metal barrier, but Sainz is a past winner here. This season, he's missed the consistency, scoring points in every rally, but still he's yet to win. In Argentina, he starts though with severe back pain, caused by straining it in training. I feel quite comfortable here. Very warm people. This is a country where people love rallying and that is very important for the whole uh, family of rallying. Also consistent but winless is Sainz's teammate Francois Delacour. His point scoring run goes back 10 events, but he hasn't won since 94. It was uh, nearly impossible to win last year with Peugeot, you know, in Corsica, in San Remo, but OK, I didn't win, I finished seventh. And now I would like to win with Ford, for sure. Colin McRae's had a disastrous season, docked by mechanical problems and bad luck. He starts pointless in Argentina. I enjoy Argentina very much, but it's, we've never had a, we've been on the podium once, I think. So it would be nice if we could turn it all around this year. Subaru's Richard Burns won here last year, and he needs a repeat if he's to have any chance of winning the title. Just three points this season already leaves him with a mountain to climb. Yeah, we've done well the last, the last two years we've won here, so uh, it has been a good event, but having said that, we've won Portugal, so we're not taking anything for, for granted. We have to, we still have got a lot of work to do. First time out in Argentina is the Skoda team. Big and strong, the Octavia should run well here. The drivers, Bruno Thierry and Armin Schwartz. 
of the scene is set for a dramatic rally in a dramatic setting right in the middle of South America. So day one and eight stages, six of them run on the plains around La Cumbre, but the first two were spectator super specials on a racetrack in Cordoba. As championship leader, Tommy Mackinnon was first off the ramp. In the run-up to the rally, Carlos Sainz pulled out of two official functions, fueling stories that his back pain would force him out of the rally. But Sainz is a trooper, and he was at the start. Run twice over a three-and-a-half-kilometer track, stages one and two were dominated by Sainz's teammate, Colin McRae. Third overall, and Solberg in Super <laughs> Tommy Mackinnon took no risks and finished the ninth stages 10th. Second overall, despite his bad back, Carlos Sainz. Not a good start for Peugeot. Oriol was 17th, Robin Perra 16th, and Marcus were a 10th. Dawn brought fog for stage 3. Mackinnon was worried it would cut his visibility. Sites had struggled to sleep well, but made the start of stage three. But would he be able to go any further? <laughs> First on the road is looking a good thing on the road. The road is cleaner, but Mackin had got the worst of the fog on stage three. By stage four, it had cleared a little, but then it was a puncture that slowed the fin. He was not unhappy to be second overall. In a seat specially modified and with a splash of fin killers, Sites bravely attacked the Argentine stages. elder statesman. After losing almost 20 seconds though last night on stages one and two, Oriol was back in the groove on stages three and four, leaping to fifth overall. But back in the Peugeot team for Argentina was Harry Rovampera, the man who more than anyone threatens Oriol's place in the team for 2002. Rovampera too was slow last night but despite a gearbox problem, in daylight, he moved to sixth overall. Less than a kilometre into stage three, Ford's Francois Delacour clipped the inside of a hairpin and flipped his focus into the scenery. Luckily for the Frenchman, spectators manhandled him back onto the road and back into action, a minute and a half lost. His windscreen broken, Delacour had dropped to 15th before finishing stage four and getting any chance of repairs. Like Colin McRae and Richard Burns, reigning champion Marcus Grunholm started Rally Argentina knowing that only a win would save this year's title hopes when a turbo problem starved the Finns Peugeot of power on stages three and four, losing him 82 seconds to the leader. was Freddy Leutz's 50th World Rally, but a stray rock on stage three did its best to ruin the celebration. It bent the steering and the suspension on his Mitsubishi and forced the Belgian to spend 20 minutes making roadside repairs. Leutz made the start of stage four, but only just. Richard Burns had planned to be leading after stage four, but out of sight he spun his Subaru, losing 12 seconds. Last year's winner claimed also he lost time in the fog, but so too did most of the other drivers. He was lucky and relieved to be as high as four. The rocks in South America are large and hard, as Skoda drivers Bruno Thierry and Armin Schwartz both found out. Like his compatriot Freddy Likes, Thierry was forced to fix his suspension between stages three and four. Alistair McRae was the fastest of the two high Hyundais, but he complained of stones and ruts in the road, making the going rough. 
three places back in 11th, Kenneth Erickson dropped time when his windscreen missed it up and then he spun. Peter Solberg came to Argentina looking to regain some confidence in his ability. The talented Norwegian had more crashes than finishes this year. He refused to even look at the results until the end of the day. But if he had, he'd have been pleased to know he was seventh. Even with a spin. Opens five. Opens five in the free right. 30, short foot left box. Running 14th on the road in Argentina normally means a rough ride for a driver, but dry weather had given Colin McRae a smooth surface on which to launch an attack. In two stages, he turned an overnight lead of five seconds to a massive 39 second gap to Carlos Sainz. The charge was not without risk, but McRae knew that without a win here, his title hopes were all but over. The Scot has no points from 2001. After four stages, McRae dominates, equal second as Sainz and Mackinnon, but places two to five are separated by just ten seconds. But back at service, McRae was as surprised as his rivals by the speed. Colin, a double stage win this morning couldn't be going much better. Yeah, going very well. Um, everything's running really smoothly. The car feels good. At the moment, Probably I'm not not 100% yet, and, and yeah, we will see. There's How is your back feeling? It's not 100%, that's it. First stage was very, very difficult. It was so foggy, and uh, and uh, the surface was like uh, like a polished and a little bit wet. I, I think it is. It's not the best position to be in first car. On the first stage, uh, about two k's after the start on the hairpin left, you know. I was um, sideways and there was a big rot. Then the car rolled and uh, it was uh, a long time for the spectator to come and to help me to put back the car again on the wheel and, and I lost about 1 minute 30. First day was quite foggy and it was not, not easy but okay we did a, quite a good time. Second one it was much better. Just two case, little fog but not so bad. <laughs> Before the last rally, Didier Oriol hadn't won for two years, but much to the relief of the Peugeot bosses, he won in Catalonia. He has a unique outlook. You, you don't must learn driving when you are young. It's most just natural. I, I, I did my first rally in 76, and immediately I do very, very good time with standard tire, and, and all the people say, who is this driver? It's completely crazy. Who is this driver? He debuted with Lancia in 1989 and finally won the title with Toyota in 1994. When I get the title, I say always, it makes no difference. And uh, I can say the same today. What is very important for me is to play with the car, to have fun with my car and to win a race and to, to have a fight. It's this, really this moment what I like, to have the fight. And if you win, that is the best moment. It's more important than to win the title for me. Next up, stage five. 23 kilometers, snaking round Lake Zapato and up the Dolores Valley. The record down the stage held by Carlos Sainz in a Toyota. His time, 17 minutes, 35 seconds. By stage five, the fog had lifted, but instead a cloud of rally fans had descended on the Pampas. Tommy Mackinnon was not benefiting from running first on the road. He dropped from second to third, but he was happy just to still be in the rally. Watch the left of the screen. At close to 150 kilometers an hour, a spectator is stood right on the racing line. Mackinnon swerves to avoid him. He cannot believe it. If Sainz had any thoughts of pulling out of the rally, they were long gone now. He was competitive in third, and that helped blunt the pain of his back trouble. Some drivers use the altitude and a lack of oxygen to explain the loss of speed. Didier Oriol was one. Oriol wasn't happy to see his rival, Harry Rovenpera, move up the leaderboard despite damage to his steering and suspension. Peugeot 
Peugeot's mechanics had changed the turbo on Marcus Grunholm's car, and the difference was instantaneous. He moved from 10th to 7th. Richard Burns was determined to knock his countryman McRae off top spot. On stage six, he broke McRae's run of five stage wins and leapt to second overall. Looking more and more confident, Burns' Subaru teammate, Petter Solberg. The view backwards from the Impreza showing how neat Titan, and tidy the, the Norwegian long. was trying Into to keep his lines. With over 60 river crossings on this rally, the drivers almost lose count of the jumps. On one water splash, Kenneth Eriksson crushed the front of his Hyundai. On stage five, Colin McRae made it five stage wins from five, but with Burns pipping him on stage six, the Scots charge had finally been halted. But his lead was a comfortable 46 seconds. Six right of a crest and dip into six right of a jump into three right plus five. Into four left plus of a crest long. Fifty to three right plus opens. Into six left of a crest into five left plus opens the six crest into three left opens. So after stage six, confirmation of McRae's cushion to Burns. Less than five seconds separate Mackinnon and Seitz. In fifth and sixth, that personal battle between Rob and Perra and Oriol. Pulling 46 seconds ahead. Can you catch him? Um, well, judging on what's happened so far, you'd say no, but I, I made that mistake in the first stage, which probably lost me 20 of those seconds. So, I don't know. I don't know. It will only take him to, to make a similar mistake. Harry, you seem to have found a bit of rhythm on the last two stages. Yes, we have uh, something wrong with the uh, suspension and, and uh, set up with the uh, roll bars, but we're chasing the last service and now we're going like usual. Despite thick cloud, it stayed dry for the last two stages of the day. Mackinnon was locked in a duel with the slightly disabled Carlos Seitz, and that left the Finn frustrated. But Mackinnon kept the gap to Seitz and third place close enough for a charge on day two. Sainz became only the third driver to win a stage on day one. Rob and Perra looked on course for a podium place when his car slowed by a broken suspension, drowns in the water splash. Dismay inside car number 16. On the road section, Rob and Perra is passed by Petter Solberg. You can see the bent wheel. Between stages seven and eight, Rob and Perra pulls over, but a kick okay, to the car well. says it all. Stage seven caught out another driver, this time Freddie Lloyd, in a roll so slow it almost looked like an action replay. But the ever willing Argentinian spectators rolled the Mitsubishi back onto its wheels and Lloyd back into the fray. We rolled in a hairpin, a very small, uh, tight hairspin, uh, first gear, and uh, the car snapped in the gravel, and uh, we rolled like that. We lost about uh, 30 seconds. Luckily, not too much damage, but uh, okay. Richard Burns clawed back a few more seconds to McRae in the final few kilometers of the day, setting up a potential battle of the Brits on days two and three. McRae, though, was confident that a 41-second lead will be enough of a cushion. On the last stage of the day, Colin's brother Alistair found his Hyundai filling with smoke. Trained for just such an incident, McRae turned firefighter. I think what's happened is the tailpipes come off in the start of stage seven and set the back of the car on fire, so obviously burnt the car with the stuff and put it out. 
carried on, but we just stop again, so not very good. Drama right to the end of the last corner of the last stage of the day. Toshi Arai overcooking his Subaru. So with day one of three over, it's an all British top two. Third is the stoic Carlos Sainz and fourth, Tommy Mackinnon. Peugeot's a fifth and sixth. Just out of the point, Solberg and Lloyd, then Delacour and Thierry. Do you think you can catch Richard and perhaps Colin? Well, Colin is quite well ahead. Uh, Richard is uh, maybe possible. It's uh, still two, two days of, of driving and hopefully we, we can be fighting with him. 46 seconds down and Colin, what's the game plan for the morning? Well, we just carry on, you know, go and try to drive as fast as we can. That's what he's going to do, and uh, that's all we can do. The, the, the stages tomorrow I enjoy a little more. They're very fast, and, uh, well, well, we'll see. This isn't the first rally you've led this year. As you know all too well, it can be a tough event. Three days, make up a rally, two still to go. Yeah, especially here, Argentina is one of the toughest, and there's a lot of rocks and places to catch out, so... Uh, We'll just try and keep it going, try and keep it safe. As demonstrated by Alistair McRae, all aspects of safety have to be covered, and that includes the driver's personal protection. As WRC drivers, we drive fast. We've obviously got safety in mind. That's why we don't wear this. Firstly, we have the Nomex top, uh, which is basically a fireproof polo neck, which in the event of an accident and fire should protect us. This is a race suit, which again is three layer Nomex. It makes it very warm in the car, but obviously protects us against fire. Driving boots, very thin, thin sole, it lets us feel the pedals, but again, they're fireproof. Gloves, again they're fireproof, no mechs all over, uh, with suede in the inside, which helps grip to the suede steering wheel and obviously stops us letting go of the wheel when we don't want to. No mechs balaclava, again to protect us against fire. The helmet in case of head injuries, if we have an accident and bang our head, that will protect us. We also have a built in communication system which links us to the co driver, enabling us to listen to the pace notes. See ya! Sunrise and for day two, the rally moves south of Cordoba to the hills around Santa Rosa de Calamachita for seven stages. Today includes the fastest ones of the rally and the stage with the biggest water splash. Rally Argentina is famous for its water splashes. The cars need to be sealed tight. If they spring a leak, it can lead to a watery grave. There are a few deep ones, so we have to watch out for them to see how the car handles the engine, uh, doesn't get any water and uh, how everything goes. If you hit the water at very high speed, it's very deep. It can actually go right through the radiator and it can actually stall the electric fans, which, you know, uh, obviously then you can have a situation of overheating. I remember last year with the Peugeot, as soon as there was some water splash, I have to go slow down, and with the foot I will go flat out. The crowd swarmed to the Santa Rosa splash. Last year, Petter Solberg gave them what they wanted. This year I have a little bit more slow, and uh, just try to be a little bit careful because it's a kick in the, in the water. As football fans gather behind the goal, Argentinian rally fans group around the water splashes a weekend, over a quarter of a million spectators flocked to the stages. First into the natural amphitheatre, Colin McRae, cool, calm and very, very fast. So many times the Scot has had his lead hijacked by bad luck, he dared not think about anything but keeping the car between the walls of spectators. Richard Burns knew he had to attack from the first corner of the first stage on day two. He opted for a slightly softer tyre than McRae, and it cost him some grip, but still the Englishman set fastest time by two tenths of a second. Left back, 30, meter right, minus in. 
30. Flat left 20, medium right plus long 40. Slow medium left in 10, medium right in. Carlos Sainz was up for much of the night getting physiotherapy, but he still put up a good fight. Even with noises coming from his gearbox, the double world champion and former winner here was fifth quickest on stage nine. His third place was safe. Tommy Mackinnon's plans to wrestle third place from Sainz evaporated when his Mitsubishi lost power to one of the rear wheels. Cost the fin over half a minute and dropped him to fifth. Just four tenths of a second ahead of Mackinnon now was Didier Oriol. He had a turbo problem, but it didn't slow him through the water splash. Marcus Grunholm was the quickest of the Peugeots, but still his speed was not enough to keep up with Burns and McRae. But at least the world champion was now in the points. Mindful of his crash here last year and just straightening up at the last moment, Peter Solberg in the Subaru. Like day one on day two, Solberg vowed not to look at his times until the final service area. A huge contrast between stages 10 and 11. Stage 10, one of the slowest of the day with an average speed of 80 kilometers. And stage 11, the fast one at 113 kilometers an hour. Burns and McRae were exchanging blows like boxers. On stage 10, it was McRae's turn to set fastest time, but the gaps were minimal. Even when Burns got one back on stage 11, the gap between the bricks was only just below 40 seconds. Burns pushed hard, but by now there was a vague sense of resignation from the Subaru driver. Sykes was low on energy after his bad night's sleep, but his resilience was impressive. He just wished he was tucked up in bed, not strapped in his shaking rally car. Mackinnon had tried to fix his broken transmission before stage 10, but to no avail. On board, you can hear the broken transmission rattling. On stage 11, he lost another minute before finally getting the problem sorted, using a jack and a large stone. They tried to fix it after first dates, but uh, we we just fix it, but not uh, completely. It, it went back to in, but not completely, and it came out immediately in the start of our second stage. And then we worked again after the second stage, and we managed to, to make it a bit better and a bit uh, properly in, and, uh, and it, it, then it stays. Makina was not the only former world champion in trouble. Didier Oriol lost a minute and a half on stage 10 when his turbo broke, dropping him out of the points. He tried to fix it before stage 11, but it got worse, losing him another two and a half minutes. We, we don't know yet exactly what happened. Maybe it's a little mistake of... Uh somebody in my car but okay it's life marcus grunholm was now the only peugeot driver left in the thick of the action but by the champion's high standards his speeds were less than sparkling still focused on the road and not his times petter solberg consistently in the top six stage times he benefited more than anyone from mackinnon and oriel's woes he moved to fifth Flying high, fast, Freddie Leutz was fearful that Francois Delacour would take his eighth place on stages 10 and 11. But his fear was justified. The French Ford driver set his fastest times at the rally to move from 11 seconds behind Leutz to three seconds in front. Bruno Thierry was the faster of the two Skodas in 10th overall. Teammate Schwartz was 13th. 
But hot on Thierry's heels was Japan's Toshi Arai in the third Subaru. Japan, by the way, will host two rallies this year that are vying to join the World Rally Championship in 2003. As if Alistair McRae had not seen enough smoke on day one when his car caught fire, there was a much more serious fire on stage 11. A brush blaze had started close to where a large group of spectators were standing. McRae was ninth quickest through stage 10 and 11. So after stage 11, the other McRae still leads by 39.7 seconds. Behind sights, all change with Grunholm fourth, Solberg fifth and Mackinnon sixth. That's good, it's good, it's, uh, it's just going really well, it's, you know, we're right, I am 100% anyway, I wouldn't like to have to go much quicker. Richard, you've taken a couple of seconds out of Colin's lead this morning, a good morning for you. Yeah, okay, we could have, could have uh, done with taking a couple more, but at least, at least we got something, and um, even though it's only, I think, only two seconds over those three stages, I think the fact that we're both the fastest people on the stages means we're obviously still pushing very hard, so we keep it up. The fire which Alistair McCree had seen from stage 11 was worse than first thought. Started by a barbecue, it had engulfed more than 20 spectator cars. There were no injuries. Firefighters sped to the scene, including this water tanker. Caught by an amateur cameraman, the truck loses control in the middle of the service area. Flips a Skoda team official and crashes into the two Skoda rally cars. Jens Pullman suffered broken ribs and other injuries. The rest of the team were left in a state of shock. Sitting in the car and uh, also Stefan and suddenly I hear the people crying and suddenly I saw this big truck on me and I asked, fortunately I was not uh, fastened and I had just time to, to move and this truck came over the cabbage. And unfortunately I saw also when he hit uh, Mr. Pullman our, uh, our big boss, but it's, <laughs> I, rem I will remember this picture all my life because it's unbelievable. With both cars damaged and the team shaken, Skoda pulled out of the rally. Football, wine and rallying, the three passions of the Argentinians. But inside car number four, there was precious little passion. With Richard Burns breathing down his neck, Colin McRae had no time for emotion. It was eyes front and pedal to the metal. But he towed the line to perfection, setting fastest time on stage 12 and second fastest on stage 13. Burns had tried every trick in the book to try and catch Colin McRae. On stage 13 and 14 he was fastest, but by not very much and not enough to put more than a minor dent in McRae's armour. But unlike day one, the Subaru had made it through day two with no major mechanical problems. Hanging onto the coattails of cars four and five, Carlos Sainz, his only hope of a place better than third would be if one of the hard chargers up front was forced into a mistake. At least Sainz was now feeling better. Tommy Mackinnon went out to try and make up lost time on tyres that were too hard. Inside the car, you can see the Mitsubishi fighting for grip. Much of the time, the Mitsubishi was almost at right angles to the scenery. On stage 13, he whacked the back of the car. With the turbocharger fitted correctly this time, Oriol was back up to speed, but he'd lost too much time. But with one rough day to go, ninth could easily become sixth. Marcus Grunholm came close to setting a fastest time on stage 12, but by stage 13, the death rattle had started to ring in his 206. He had steering problems on stage 14. The unhappy Finn lost almost two minutes and slipped to sixth. 
This time we lose power steering. No, I maybe check the next flight to home. So that is more, more important now. <laughs> On stage 12, Petter Solberg's water bottle worked its way loose and got jammed under his pedals. But by stage 14, there were more worrying things to think about. He'd lost two gears. At the next service, it was time for a new there gearbox. Five right. Just get through it and it's not far. Five right into six left, 200. Six left, fifth, 60, five left. Oh, yeah, no. I lost uh, uh, fourth and six on the last stage now. Eight case before the finish. So uh, I think that could have been... It, looked, it felt very good, so uh, well, things like that can happen. Freddie Loikes went with the same tyre choice as Tommy Mackinnon, and it cost him dearly as well, but he was on course for manufacturer's points. Francois Delacour has an innate ability to make the most out of other drivers' misfortunes. From a disastrous start to the rally with a spin, he now found himself up to seventh, despite a throttle problem. A spin on stage 13 seemed innocuous enough for Kenneth Erickson, but ramming the nose into a bank filled the Hyundai's radiator with mud and sent the thermometer skyrocketing. So at the end of day two, Colin McRae is just 24 hours from his first win since the Acropolis rally last year. Burns' cause is far from lost, but it'll take more than speed to catch the Scott. Just out of the points, Francois Delacour, Freddie Loikes, Didier Oriol and Toshi Arai. We lost a little bit of time to Richard. Do you think now it's perhaps looking for third on the podium? Yeah, it looks like looks like uh, it will be a good good result if we can manage. You're looking quite tired. Is your back still giving you problems? Well, it's better than this morning. This morning was not very good. Now, like yesterday, I'm tired, but I have less pain, so it's good. Colin, Richard's won the last two stages, but you still have a considerable lead. Yeah, he just he took uh, I think a few seconds in the last one, but we backed off a bit. It was quite rutted and rough. Uh, so I just didn't want to take any chances. I think we have to rely on, on maybe a mistake from Colin or, or a problem with their car rather than, rather than being able to outpace them over tomorrow. The final day and a sting in the tail at the end of an event which has already broken many of these half a million dollar rally cars. Six stages in total, including the roughest two of the event, run at over two kilometers above sea level. of over 2,200 metres, Rally Argentina presents the cars and drivers with even more stresses than normal. As we go higher, uh, the air gets thinner. The, the net effect of that can be that the turbocharger uh, is trying to suck effectively a lot more air. Basically, the problem is that you lose power. The engine management system adapts to it very well, but the basic effect is you lose power. It's not only the engine that has a problem with the altitude. I like the engine, you will know as well that the breathing is uh, not that easy anymore, but I think everybody is prepared, is fit enough, and uh, I think it's just the length of the stages and the, the twisty, uh, twistiness is very, very demanding and makes you very tired probably, but uh, I think the height is not such a big problem. But before the mile-high monsters, four stages lower down. Sykes' back was better, but now his legs hurt. The only pain Burns was worried about was the pain of maybe not winning. First away, the mad Burns must beat Colin McRae. The Scott only knew parts of this stage, and his lack of knowledge cost him valuable seconds. But he wasn't phased. He'd rather lose time than the whole rally. McRae was ready for a final attack from Burns on stages 18 and 19. With bits hanging off his Ford after clipping the scenery, he was looking battle-weary, but the speed of the car was unaffected. McRae was third fastest on both stages. 
Burns didn't look like a man with a mountain to climb, laid back, sipping at his water supply, he really looked like a Sunday morning driver, but Burns' speed was anything but geriatric. Averaging 120 kilometers an hour, he was second fastest through Kura Bruchero. Arms flexed, he made his Subaru dance to fastest times on 18 and 19. The gap now, 21.8 seconds. The game was still wide open. No drastic need to hurry for Carlos Sainz. Third looked safe, and so far his Ford had run like clockwork. And that's how he wanted it to stay. The biggest prize on offer behind Sainz was the fight for fourth. Peter Solberg started the day with it in his grasp. Then it all went wrong. He dropped half a minute with power steering problems on stage 18. Pulled back half a second to Mackinnon on stage 19, but it was too late though. The Finn had taken fourth. Tommy Mackinnon set fastest time on stage 16, but at a price. Nose diving into the dirt jolted the Mitsubishi so much it started losing oil and water. But Mackinnon didn't let up, not until the chequered flag. A transfusion of oil kept Mackinnon mobile, but for how long? A spin on stage 17 cost the Finn 20 seconds, but Mackinnon has the luck of the devil. He survived to reach the next service. Marcus Grunholm wished he had some of Mackinnon's luck. On stage 18, he misjudged a fast left-hander. The result, he ended up in the bushes. He managed to drive out, but his clutch was destroyed. Peugeot's rally had gone from bad to worse. The crashing jumps of the stage left the cars in pieces. The turbo pipe came loose on Francois Delacour's Ford, losing him 45 seconds. He fixed it though before stage 17. Then there were problems with the throttle, but he was still seventh. With all these breakdowns, Didier Oriol was wise to keep pushing. For now, he was ninth and motoring at speeds over 150 kilometers an hour. Freddie Loikes was rewarded for his patience, being handed seventh place when Delacour had his turbo problems. But his Mitsubishi wasn't handling as he would have liked. <laughs> on stage 16, an oil pipe came loose on Alistair McRae's Hyundai, but he fixed it, and by the next stage, he was on a charge. So much so, he nearly went out. Watch the outside of the bend. A bit further behind, Kenneth Eriksson, the oldest of the top-line drivers. Not that he's lost his youthful enthusiasm for making a rally car fly. So after stage 19, Burns is closer than ever, but still he needs to claw back half a second a kilometre to pass McRae. A tall order. But in service, there were some worried faces at Ford. We just came in a bit tight and a very tight left hander and the front of the car caught a rock on the, the inside. Uh, apart from that, nothing. It's, uh, just one, it was a very, very tricky stage, so it's difficult to, to find the balance between the speed and the safety. Smiles maybe, but Burns knew the worst was yet to come. Charged with navigating the way through the rocks, the co-drivers. On the recce they were foggy, a little bit muddy, but today they're clear. But they're just um, very twisty, a lot of rocks at the side, climbing to 2,200 metres on the first one. So uh, definitely a sting in the tail. Obviously, it's going to be far worse the more cars that run through it. And you, Richard may find some rocks pulled out, perhaps, from, uh, from us in front. 
Burns knew that next time back in service, it would be as winner or loser. Three times in the last three years, this is where Colin McRae ended his South American adventures. Not surprisingly, that fact was at the back of his mind as he crashed like a bulldozer between the boulders. But back off he didn't. For the ninth time in 20 stages, he was fastest. Burns was two seconds slower than McRae. Even in the closing stages of the rally, there was little the rest of the field could do to match the two Britons. takes a dedicated fan to stand in the freezing temperatures on the top of the world. With Mackinnon now in front, Solberg backed off. It didn't help that a brave choice of tyre left him with not much grip. Mackinnon was now almost half a minute ahead of Solberg, the last of the Finns left flying on the ramp. Fifth fastest on stage 20 and third fastest on stage 21, Francois Delacour, and did the rally seventh. Freddie Loikes finally got the handling of his Mitsubishi sorted out for the final two stages. Just when Peugeot thought their rally could get no worse, Didier Oriol rammed a rock. It took the wheel clean off. All three Peugeots were now out. Stage 20 was a stage too far for Kenneth Eriksson as well. Seen from Alistair McRae's car, the Swedes off the road, the wheel nuts sheared off. The final frontier, 2,200 metres above sea level, the stage known as El Condor. McRae then first into the last stage, his title chances dependent on this last 13 minutes of action. Gingerly, but with the confidence of a former world champion, he and Nicky Grist tangoed through the rocks. Burns' hope now that McRae would hit something or break something. But Burns too had to make it through the rocky rat run. The Subaru swung like a pendulum, just centimetres from objects large and immovable. At the split times, just past halfway, McRae was ahead of Burns. But Burns didn't know it though, and there wouldn't have been much he could have done about it, even if he did. Third through the stage, and en route to third place, Carlos Sainz. This, surely one of the bravest drives in motorsport history. Comfortably fourth now, Tommy Mackinnon, relieved to finish the rally, and relieved that his lead in the championship is still safe. Having spent most of the rally driving without looking at his times, Petter Solberg could finally look at the scores and find himself fifth. Freddie Lights have been through ups and downs and even rollovers, but sixth was safely hit. But the man of the moment, leader of Rally Argentina from start to finish, Colin McRae, 11 months since his last victory, Spot on. A winner again. For Burns, an A-plus for effort after a bad start to the rally. The final gap between the two Britons, 26.9 seconds. Nothing in South American terms. His face said it all. McRae, his 21st career victory. The rally itself is a rally I enjoy and it's, it's never been that kind to us in the past but to win this year is a bit extra special but obviously because of the run we've had before now so hopefully that's it all back in track. Not 10 points but it still puts your season back on track. Yeah it does and if you if you look at how many points we can get or we need to be able to be in with a chance of winning the championship then then it's exactly what we needed. Um, we're going to have to continue being reliable and being quick to make sure that we still have a chance but going on the, on the results here, then that should be possible. It wasn't easy for sure. Yeah, I'm not used to, to do a rally. You have enough problems in the rally with, with the speed and everything. And this time we have, we have to, to fight with something else, which I hope uh, we, can, uh, we can solve as soon as possible for the next rally. You're still leading the championship. Yeah, uh, well, 
it was not so much happened. Of course, Colin and Richard came closer. The Carlos just one point closer. It is. It is. It was not so bad. Of course, we are, I have to be happy to, to end up fourth. McRae, the winner then, Burns, the runner-up. Behind Sykes, Mackinnon's fourth, Solberg fifth, and Leuk sixth. Just out of the points, Delacour, Arai, and Alistair McRae. Mackin is now five points ahead of Sykes in the Drivers' Championship, but into the fray come McRae and Burns. In the manufacturers, Ford's first and third mean they close in on Mitsubishi. His first points for seven months, his first win for 11 months. This was the rally that saved Colin McRae's championship hopes. Next stop on the World Rally Championship, the Cyprus Rally. Brand new to the championship last year, it was hot and dusty. Is this the start of a run of good luck for McRae? Join us to find out.